That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. thing we've ever tried to do and achieve is going to the moon. These images are seared into our collective memory. We see them so much it's actually almost like we have experienced it. I've always wanted to look out the windows that they look out of, to see what they saw, to see the earth as it sinks away into the blackness. I've just always been frustrated with the quality of what we've seen before. The colour's wrong, there's no detail, you can't pull out the detail in the shadow, and it never made sense. They use the best cameras, they use the best film, they use the best lens, the best photo lab. They, we should be seeing them in a better state. But we've got the techniques, we've got the digital processing, and with some time and effort, we can pull all that detail out and present it in a way we've never been able to see before. NASA wasn't doing it, nobody else was doing it. It should be done, and that's when I started the project. I wanted to see Neil Armstrong on the moon. He's this absolutely monumental turning point in human history. I want to see that, but I couldn't, because he held the camera, so the photographs were of Buzz Aldrin. That image has been missing from the history books, and it's, it's so important. So that's when I had the idea of, OK, he wasn't captured on the still film, but he was captured on the 16mm cine film. And that's when I decided to have a go at applying this quite unusual stacking technique that's used in astrophotography, for example, because Armstrong st stayed still long enough to be able to lift several frames and then I stacked them on top of each other and I just couldn't believe the detail that was coming out. It was almost like I'd gone back to 1969 and I was standing in the lunar module looking out that window watching one of the most important moments in history unfold before my eyes. When I'm looking through these 35,000 images, they're all very dark, so I'm looking for anything, any hint that might give me an indication that there's something interesting in it. And in this one, I could just see a, a glint of a window. And in the corner, there's a little purple square, and I recognise that as the guidance site that they used. So I thought, well, there's probably something interesting in that. And then as I started to pull that detail out, I could see there's a person in that, and that's Commander Jim McDivitt. The reward is we end up with this cinematic atmospheric shot of Jim McDivitt, of a man doing his work, but in an extraordinary place. And I spoke to Rusty Swicart, who actually took that photograph. And it turns out this is actually a very historic moment. Although it looks like he's looking up in, in wonder, a space, which gives it this atmospheric feel, it's better than that, he's actually undertaking the docking. They were testing the lunar module, and this is the first ever docking between two crewed spacecraft. Blue marble is the most reproduced photograph in history. We see it everywhere, but what I want to try and do with the book is put all that, that into context. This was three men in a small capsule travelling to the moon at 25,000 miles an hour, and one of them looked out his window, picked up a camera, pulled the trigger, and took a photograph of the whole illuminated Earth amongst the blackness of space. A very powerful, very important photograph. The Man on the Moon photograph, so this is the one of, of Buzz Aldrin. I want people to feel like this is what it actually looks like if I made this journey. That photograph, the sun is behind Aldrin, and so his front is actually in shade, so he's only really illuminated by reflected light. And that reflected light, if we look in his visor, you can see he's standing next to Eagle, the lunar module, which is wrapped in this shiny gold captain material. So, so he's actually reflected and bathed in this wonderful orange gold light I researched a huge amount of around what the astronauts were saying actually when they were taking the photographs because they had these discussions with the people in the photo lab for example and these are on record but also I've been lucky enough to get a few of those select humans that made this incredible journey that actually took the photographs and were there to critically assess what I've done. Charlie Duke for example talks a lot about the, the blacks, how incredibly deep this black is. We earthlings just can't comprehend it. He said it's almost like it's got a texture, like a black velvet you could touch. It's incredibly intense. And that's contrasted with the most intense, super bright white sunlight because, of course, it hasn't been filtered through the atmosphere. So be, having, that, having some of the astronauts involved has been priceless. There's a great one of Armstrong when they got, came back into the lunar module 
and they've taken off the helmets and they're just contemplating the enormity of what they've just achieved. And Buzz Aldrin captures a brilliant portrait of Armstrong. Just the expression on his face. And if you look closely, his, his eyes are actually quite teary. Is it emotion or is it just irritation from moon dust? Are they dry? Is it exhaustion? We don't know. But that's quite a, a poignant image. There are images that are just of scientific interest. There are images of the moon and the earth and these rudimentary looking spacecraft. And again, when you see, when you can see a person in them, there's a particular image on Apollo 17 where I've managed to kind of reduce the glare on the window. And now we can see this rudimentary spacecraft that's just come back from the moon and we can see through the window as there's Amanda Jean Cernan piloting the last moon ship from the moon. I want the reader to feel like this is as close as they can get to making this journey themselves. To be able to step on board these spacecraft, ride along with these space explorers on what is the most, the most incredible ever human expeditions from the Earth. To feel what it's like to step onto the moon, look down. There's detail from the tiniest particles that you can see of dust and rocks at the feet, astronauts' feet, and then to look up, see the mountains and rills and this incredible lunar landscape and look up and see Earth. So to feel like they're as close as they can get to making that journey themselves.